So if I'm studying, I take zero notes. Nada, nothing. I stopped taking notes in my second year at medical school and I actually started performing better than I ever did while spending less time studying. Want to know how I did it? Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Alex. I'm a surgeon and founder of a few edtech companies. And on this channel, we focus on learning and human performance to help you live healthier, wealthier, happier, and more productive lives. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how and why I take no notes when studying and how after I started taking no notes, I was able to study less while getting better grades. I'll be walking you through step by step the ways that I actively learn during lectures and classes and how I can remember all the content without wasting any time making loads and loads of notes. While I use these techniques during medical school and when training as a surgeon, the tips in this video can be applied to absolutely anything and help you perform better in whatever you're studying. I'm gonna tell you why I stopped taking notes and where that strategy came from, and then I'll split up my strategy into planning, creating recall questions, reviewing, and repeating. At the end of the video, I'll also dive into flashcards and apps that can help you save time and take no notes. So do stick around till the very end. Now you don't need to have seen any of my previous videos to watch this one, but I'll touch on topics like active recall, space repetition, and the Pomodoro and Feynman techniques, which I cover in detail in other videos. So be sure to hit subscribe to learn more about these evidence-based study techniques. So let's get into it. What is the strategy I use to take no notes? And first, why did I even stop taking notes in the first place? Well, in my first year at medical school, I sat in lectures taking down notes from the slides and then reading back and highlighting these to prepare for exams. Unfortunately, this method of learning didn't work out great for me as I failed an exam as no one had taught me how to actually study and learn. I'd usually turn up to lectures without any preparation and then find it a little bit boring sitting and listening for anything for longer than 30 to 60 minutes. I'd just copy everything down from the PowerPoint slides and note down word for word what the lecturer said without really trying to understand anything. I'd then try and make sense of my notes, condense them and reread them before an exam. Now this wasted loads of time and these study methods of rereading and summarizing information have been shown to be both inefficient and ineffective in studies like Dunlosky et al from back in 2013, which I later read and which I cover in detail in my video on active recall. Now, despite all this overwhelming evidence, all of us still default to note-taking and rereading, and there's a really simple explanation. It's because it's easy, it's passive, and it's what we were taught at school. While copying down the slides might help you stay awake during lectures, and it might even make you feel like you've accomplished something and been productive, in reality, the fastest way to learn and retain information is by making our brains work by testing ourselves and recalling information which is an active process rather than a passive one. We all have this misconception that in order to study, we have to put information into our brains. But actually, if you look at the evidence, it's the complete opposite. The real way to remember anything and to make learning stick is by retrieving information from our brains rather than trying to put things in. Now, after realizing all of this and spurred on by failing an exam, I experimented with a few methods and researched lots more and came up with a strategy that saved me loads of time and helped me to come first in my medical school exams and my postgraduate surgical training. So let's take a deeper look at the strategy I used and exactly where it came from. Now the core of the strategy is based around active recall, practice testing and spaced repetition. I avoid highlighting, rereading and summarizing at all costs. In simple terms, the strategy is plan, create questions, review and then repeat. It's a simplified version of a reading comprehension framework known as SQR3 named for its five steps of survey, question, read, recite, and review. This method was introduced by Francis P. Robinson, a prominent American education philosopher in his 1946 book, Effective Study. I experimented with the SQR3 method, and I'll cover it in detail in another video, so be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. But as I'm obsessed with efficiency and productivity, I simplified it to plan, questions, review, and repeat. So let's look at the planning phase first. As I used to just rock up to lectures, I rarely had any context for what was being taught, and I definitely didn't read the course syllabus in any great detail. So every week before lectures, I started planning out what lectures were coming up, where they fitted into the course syllabus, and what might be tested on an exam, and what I'm gonna study. I'll then block out time each day before a lecture to go over the lecture notes and make sure I know the learning outcomes and what's gonna be covered. And I'll also skim through to see if there are any terms or concepts that I don't understand. Most lectures will have aims and outcomes highlighted at the start of them, 
And by making sure you understand these as a minimum, it will give you better insight into what's important and allow you to be more focused in your learning when in a lecture. Now, if you don't have any lecture notes ahead of a lecture, you can dive into the recommended textbook for that subject and match the lecture to the relevant chapter. You can then use this to help you scope out any key concepts and learning outcomes. Planning and preparing before the lecture will also help you to learn some top level concepts ahead of the lecture itself and spot anything that you find difficult as you make questions in the next section. This then allows you to test yourself in the lecture using active recall when the lecturer mentions topics or poses questions. Equally, if you planned ahead and know the course syllabus and the learning outcomes, if a lecturer goes off topic, you immediately know it isn't relevant or useful to you and you can remain focused on the key high yield concepts. Now planning doesn't need to take long, just a single Pomodoro of 25 minutes or less the day before a lecture. When I was starting off, I found it a little bit tricky to stick to planning every lecture the day before and so I'll give you a quick regression you can use, which is to just grab the first 5-10 to 10 minutes of the lecture while other people are still joining or sitting down or the lecturer is giving an intro and review the syllabus on your phone and skim through the lecture notes and learning outcomes, which is a fairly low effort habit to get into when planning. Now in the planning phase when going through the notes or recommended textbook, rather than just reading ahead of the lectures, I'll actively create questions just like in my video on how I practically use Active Recall. I'll try and do this ahead of the lecture if I have the lecture notes, or if not, I'll make questions from the relevant section of the recommended textbook or course notes. Ideally, creating questions ahead of the lecture is the best way to learn, as you can then test yourself and review your knowledge in the lecture itself, which we'll touch on in the next section. As I go through the lecture notes, I'll have my Evernote or Word document on one side of my screen, and then the lecture notes on the other. I'll group questions under headings that match the structure of the lecture, and I'll just convert anything in the lecture slides or notes into questions. I won't write down any answers, I won't take any notes, I'll just write the questions. I'll usually do this in my Pomodoro time ahead of the lecture when I'm doing my first pass over the lecture notes. You don't need to go crazy here, just one to two active recall questions per slide covering key high yield topics. Remember, you can always come back and create more questions later, so look at the learning outcomes, know what's important and what to prioritise, and make questions only on the things that you want to focus your practice sessions on which are useful and relevant to you. Now when creating questions, I'll again give you some regressions if you're just getting started with this method, as it can be hard to consistently block out time to do this before lectures. Firstly, if you don't have any notes ahead of the lecture, it's fine to create questions in the lecture itself. If the lecture is live streaming or you're watching a pre-recorded lecture, you can again pop it up next to your Word document or note-taking app on your screen. If you do create the questions when live in class or a lecture, this actually forces you to concentrate and really think about the topic rather than just passively transcribing what's being said. The second regression is that it's also fine to bulk create questions at the beginning or end of the week of lectures if you find creating questions in bulk is easier to manage. If this is the case, simply reading over the lecture notes ahead of the lecture is fine and better than doing nothing at all, but I'd still suggest creating some questions during the lecture if you can. Now that I've planned and understood the context of the lecture and how it fits into the exam syllabus, and I've actually read through the lecture by creating a couple of questions on each slide, I'll now head to the lecture itself. In the lecture, I know what to expect, and so I'm paying attention and thinking about the questions I wrote down, and I'm self-testing in my head to see if the explanations from the lecturer can improve my understanding. I might also add in some extra questions if relevant and useful, or if I've been a bit lazy, I might use the question creation regression and create my questions during the lecture. I'm also more engaged with the material being taught, as I know its relevance and I'm actively looking for answers to questions. After the lecture and in the run up to the exam, I'll then test myself using these created questions. If I don't know the answer, I won't sweat it and I'll jump back into the lecture notes or the recommended textbook or read around the topic by watching a YouTube video or using another resource. This process helps provide further context to the information you're looking up and also helps you to more deeply understand concepts and refine the initial questions that you made as you start to identify your knowledge gaps through self-testing. When reviewing, I'll initially think about the answer in my head and will then try and write down an answer in more detail to test the extent of my knowledge. For each of the questions, I'm thinking about the Feynman technique and asking myself, do I know this well enough that I can explain it to a child? For example, if I've attended a lecture on hypertension in a cardiology lecture series and I've written a question like, what are the treatment options for hypertension? I'm making sure I understand what the lifestyle changes and medical interventions are but I'm also making sure I understand why they work by diving deeper into the source material or I'm writing new recall questions. The process of converting learning content 
into questions is a form of studying and you're deepening your understanding of the topic and you're being intentional about what you have to learn and what you don't have to learn. And by improving these questions, you're just making it easier for your future self to use active recall and actually learn effectively as the exam approaches so that in the weeks before the exam, you can quickly run through lots and lots of questions. Now that we've reviewed and self-tested and identified any knowledge gaps, I'll add these questions into my space study timetable. I covered this in my videos on spaced repetition and how to study for exams, and I'll also add the link to the timetable in the description below too. This then reminds me when to come back to a topic and set of questions using spacing intervals, which reduces the effects of the forgetting curve and helps you to remember information for longer. When testing yourself, there are really three repeatable steps. Firstly, try to answer the question as best you can. Secondly, fill in your knowledge gaps. And thirdly, practice again at spaced intervals. It's this repetition of practicing, understanding, filling in the knowledge gaps, and then practicing again that makes for a good revision session. A typical day might therefore look like, do active recall questions from a previous lecture, attend a lecture I've planned and created questions for, and then plan and create questions for a future lecture. Now the best study technique is the one that works best for you and helps you to learn as efficiently and effectively as possible. And if you love using flashcard apps like Anki or Shikan, then go for it. A modification for flashcard lovers is to add your questions into a flashcard app and to build out decks relevant to what you're studying and use the automated spacing intervals provided. If you enjoy flashcards when creating questions, you can just directly enter them into Anki or a flashcard app rather than first into a Word document or Evernote equivalent to save you time. Now it is worth noting that creating flashcards takes a little bit longer as you'll need to add in answers and ensure those answers are robust compared to the standard question creation systems where you go to the source notes to review anything you're not sure about. Most lectures and textbooks are well structured and will likely be more robust than a two-line bullet point answer added to a flashcard. If you like creating flashcard decks and using pre-made decks from others, then you just want to get into the habit of creating and reviewing information in as efficient a way as possible. Remember, rather than just learning short facts on the reverse of the flashcards, you should still go to the source material to ensure you deeply understand the concept. And it's also important to check that if you're spending time entering questions and answers, that they don't already exist in a pre-made deck, as this is just duplication of work. If you've not used Anki before, here's a quick example of what that might look like. It's pretty quick to add a question, copy over an example from the source material, and then add it to your study deck. Shiken is pretty similar too. You can choose from multiple question types and then add your question and answer to your flashcard and then you can interact with it and test yourself and rate how well you know it. Both of these apps will then space out your learning for you and automate your spaced repetition intervals. So in summary, the no-note strategy I use is plan, create questions, review the questions, and then repeat using spaced repetition. Plan out what you'll be studying and understand the context of the lecture. Create questions before the lecture from notes or textbooks or during the lecture if that works better for you. After the lecture, review your questions, self-test and fill in your knowledge gaps by going back to the lecture notes or read around the subject. And then repeat using a spacing schedule to repeat the questions again and again before your exam. Remember to experiment with this method to find the way that works best for you. This is the system that I used because it optimized for time and efficiency when studying for exams around my day job as a surgeon and when running a business. Now, I'll be covering some other options in future videos, such as the SQR3 framework and its adaptations, and also how to study using flashcards, so you have a good variety of options to choose from, as there's no single best way to learn, provided you use evidence-based principles like spaced repetition and active recall. And I'll also be taking a deeper dive into how to learn new content for the very first time as efficiently as possible. So do hit subscribe and the notify button to get updates when those videos land. So that's how I take no notes. Thanks again for watching and being a subscriber subscriber. Do let me know if you have any study topics or anything else you'd like to see covered in the comments below and I'll catch you again next time.